And now, America, where vast areas of the southern states are suffering from drought and bushfires. Among the worst affected is the unique Everglades National Park in Florida. Some of these fires have been burning in the Everglades for six weeks. One of the biggest covers an area of nearly 200 square miles. The enormous columns of smoke and ash pose a health hazard to the people in nearby towns, and the damage to this unique national reserve is worrying conservationists. The raging fires have forced the authorities to abandon conventional firefighting methods. Instead, they've called in the Air Force to seed the Florida skies with ice to try and bring rain. So far, they've failed. Another ingenious firefighting device they're using is this Canadian aircraft, which scoops water from nearby lakes and drops it on the flames. This hasn't been very successful either, and it's costing the state $500 an hour. Generally, the fires have been left to follow their course, and when they've passed by, this is all that's left, little more than scorched earth. The Everglades will probably recover from the fire, as it's done in the past, but the future will remain uncertain unless something's done about the underlying cause of the fire, drought. Water holes like this, with their lush vegetation in the midst of mysterious swamps, are a rare find in today's Everglades. And becoming just as rare are the birds and animals who depend on the pools for their existence. This alligator is being threatened with extinction. Except for the Yangtze River in China, the Florida Everglades is the only place in the world where alligators are still to be found. The alligator's broad snout is the main feature that distinguishes him from the African and Asian crocodile. He looks more like the South American caiman, although the caimans are a good deal larger. Alligators at 12 feet long are relatively small, but in their swampland environment, they're extremely dangerous. The plight of the alligators in the Everglades cannot be overstated. In one generation, Florida's lost 90% of its entire alligator population. And if the drought continues, in another generation, they'll all be gone. The sawgrass swamp is cracked and scarred, sign that the Everglades is dying of thirst. Part of the problem is drought. Man is doing the rest. Animals are dying because real estate men are building roads and dams, changing the balance between salt water and fresh water, which is needed to support life in the swamps. As Miami and other urban areas have grown in size, Lake Okeechobee, the main water source in Florida, has come under increasing pressure. The result has been less and less water for the Everglades and the decimation of the animal and bird populations. Reporter Robert Hargreaves asked an Everglades park ranger which animals could become extinct if the swamps remained dry. 
two that come to mind immediately are the alligator, which uh, you see all throughout the area, and the Everglades kite. Uh, this is the only nesting area and known habitat of this bird. And these are on the endangered list now. And with the loss of the glades, these too would be another animal or bird passed into extinction. What are, they what are, they, what are the chances? What are the odds? Well, the future of the Everglades right now is in the balance. It could go either way. As you say, we have fire, we have drought, we have possibility of oil exploration in the area. We have the possibility of a giant airport complex in it. Right now, uh, we have a number of conservation organizations, ourselves, natural resources, a number of private groups, all of them trying to preserve what you see here. Why does it matter to you that this area should be preserved and not handed over to the oil drillers and the others? Well, this is a unique area. The Everglades is unique probably in the world. The loss of this, while it wouldn't really matter probably, uh, would be the loss of something which would never be seen again and is not seen anywhere else in the world. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, Florida is a burgeoning state. There's more and more people coming in. They need water. Uh, there's only a limited supply. They're obviously going to have the first... Well, this is true. When, you, when it comes to water, water is a commodity that can't easily be stored in areas like this. The flood control is working to enlarge the holding capacity of Lake Okeechobee, which is our major water reservoir. Uh, but when it comes down to a choice of animals or people, animals uh, inevitably lose. Uh, what we must do is to look for some method of governing the population, perhaps uh, even in Palm Beach County, which this area is in. Uh, we are speaking of uh, various controls, zoning, inviting people and industry to settle further north out of this immediate area to be able to hold some of this land. Inviting them or some way forcing them to live further? Well, uh, I should say lack of inviting. We're closing down or attempting to close down, and I, when I say we, I mean other government agencies to uh, lessen their efforts to attract industry and uh, new residents. Thank you very much. For the older residents of America's third largest national park, these conservation plans are welcome news. The area has always been a natural bird sanctuary and boasts more than 200 species. The Everglades kite, the American bald eagle, and the roseate spoonbill are among the extremely rare birds fighting for survival. Clearly, the task facing the conservationists in the Florida swamps is enormous, and the work already being done to save this unique environment from disappearing forever is commendable. But for the precious wildlife of the Everglades, time is running out. <laughs>